Hello, I'm Roger Bisbee from the Skill Builder channel, back with another Ask Skill Builder. This time we're looking at the problem with kitchen tiling that is coming from Effie and she's getting noises in the middle of the night. All sorts of loud, alarming noises. So let's have a look. She had a leak, her and her partner, whose name is Alex, I think. They took up the floor, they renewed everything, put new joists down, sorted the pipe book out, insulated that, put new wiring in bit of plastering there they're gonna have a brand new kitchen in here lovely job so the next thing they did is they put down some floorboards lovely job there tongue and groove floorboards all the way through nicely screwed together maybe they're not tongue and groove maybe they're butted over the top of a tongue and groove they put plywood now there's nothing wrong with putting plywood down except it's expensive to put it over the top of tongue and groove you might as well have put 18 millimeter plywood down in the first place and not had the tongue and groove floorboards done no harm but it's a lot more work and a lot more expense not something i would have done but there you go and then on top of the plywood they put a membrane an uncoupling or decoupling membrane something like schluter but it's not schluter it's a different one does the same job stuck it down and what this does is it separates the tiles out from the substrate so if there's any sort of tension there any chance that they're going to crack the tiles it just gives a kind of slip plane if you like it's a good idea i mean it's normally done on large larger floors than this and with flexible tile adhesives now they probably could have gone straight down on the plywood without in a room of that size without any real problem but never mind so the next thing was the tiles and the tiles have gone down very nicely they've used these tiled leveling wedges here that make sure all the edges are nicely lipped up if you like there's no lippage there's no high spots there and you can see along the edge that they've come very close to the edge here so they haven't left much in the way of expansion gap i'm reckoning that these are two millimeters or maybe three millimeters they go wall to wall that's the important point there so the next thing they find is the the, the units are down six months goes by and they can hear this loud popping noise and it was really alarming. They thought the tiles were cracking, but they're not cracking. They're just trying to expand and they've got nowhere to expand. And the units are on top of them. It makes it quite difficult. If they put a open grout line down there or maybe just a silicon grout line down there underneath the units where nobody could see it, it probably would have given enough room for expansion and contraction. So that's my theory. That's what I think is happening. If you've got a, an opinion, if you're a tiler and you have come across this problem before and you, you know what's going on, then by all means advise us. But I've taken advice from Ardex and they say really that grout line is too small for that size of tile. So there you go. I like a two mil grout line. Most people like it keep it thin rather than the big sort of four mil, which looks a bit ugly on a tile like that. It's good to do that but you've just got to make sure that you leave some expansion somewhere. So I hope you found that useful. I hope Effie found that interesting. Let us know, Effie, what the outcome is. If you solve this problem, let us know how you solved it because it's always useful to other people. Keep your questions coming. I'm Roger Bisbee. Come back to see us soon. We'll have lots more on Skill Builder. We've got a team of guys coming up who are going to help you with all sorts of things.